welcome back to another video. So today we are back in this casual setup in my lounge doing a Q&A but this time it is just focused on health and fitness. Last night I asked you to tweet me any questions that you may have, anything to do with health and fitness and um, I went through them this morning and there are some really good ones so thank you so much to everyone that did send in their questions. So let's get started. The first question I have here is from Kate. How did you build up your fitness level from a beginner level? You can do grueling work Workouts, but how did you get there? Any tips for beginners? Um, yeah, so I obviously didn't start my whole fitness journey going straight in with really intense workouts. I started off at the really like lower beginner easy level and um, just kind of eased myself in. So I would say it was probably about three, four years ago when I first started getting into fitness and I would just kind of go to the gym, do my own little workout, didn't really know exactly what I was doing, but I really enjoyed it. And um, also started going on runs, but it's probably not until I moved to London that I really got into fitness and started doing more of the hardcore workouts, mainly because of the classes that are available around here, and that just really helped me get into it. Because you are totally spoiled for places to go in London, so I am really lucky to live here. I go to classes like Cobox, um, gym class, bodyism, virgin active, uh, where else? Cycle, 110, frame, Barry's bootcamp, like there are literally so so many and I think just starting off going to a couple of those classes really helped me because I loved going to the gym but I didn't really know what I was doing so I would recommend just going to a couple of classes because personal training is amazing but it is very expensive so if you can't afford personal training going to a class you have an instructor there telling you exactly what to do you can kind of copy everyone else as well and you kind of motivate each other so I would just recommend going to classes if they're available if not just use kind of YouTube videos or there's so many apps that are amazing and just kind of copy along with that so you know what you're doing and that really helped me get into it. So the next question is from Nora. What defines health or being healthy to you? Love you. Thank you so much. Love you too. Uh, what defines health to me? For me it is your mental and physical well-being. So it is, it's totally how you feel inside. I know that at the moment the health and fitness industry has really given off this impression that to be fit and healthy you have to look incredible and you have to have a six pack, you have to have the most defined legs and arms and I mean that's just not achievable for a lot of people and that's so not what it's about for me, it's all about feeling good and just being healthy from the inside and it will show on the outside um, but that's not that's not why I do it and that's not what health is about, I don't think. I do think it's sad when you see on Instagram and YouTube girls and boys talking about how health and fitness is all about getting that beach body and how to look a certain way because that it's giving the wrong impression um, to young people especially. So yeah, for me it's all about your mental and physical well-being. How do I start to increase distance to my running? Currently I run a 7 to 8k, I have run 10k once, but now I signed up for a 15k in October. That's amazing, you're doing so, so well, honestly. Don't beat yourself up about it, and you've got until October to build up the extra 5k, um, so you should be absolutely fine. But some advice I would give is try to go on a different running route now. So I don't know if you're running the same route, the ones that you've been doing, the 7, 8 or 10k runs, but now that you're training for 15k, I would say try out different areas, um, try and plan out what will be a 10 to a 15k beforehand so you know roughly what way to go and that should really help mentally just mixing it up because you're not just you know going around in circles the same route that you've been doing for ages for example for me that really helped just different a change of scenery it's more exciting it's more fun and it takes your mind off of it and also I would suggest playing some podcasts now that you're going on slightly longer runs you can get bored and um, even music can get a little bit boring and repetitive but listening to a podcast um, it distracts you in a way and that really kept me going when I was training for the marathon last year um, but also make sure your nutrition is good now that you are running a little bit further you need to make sure that you're eating the right foods to fuel you for those runs so having a uh, really healthy good carbs the night before your run for example so rice is really good because it will fill you up and give you all of that energy in the morning um, or if you're running in like the afternoon or the evening 
a bowl of um, porridge or oatmeal is really really good for energy about I'd say two hours before so yeah I would say change your roots every time um, podcasts to distract you or music if you prefer and your food and good luck in your 15k that's amazing I'm sure you'll do great and Jordan has asked what is your favorite healthy snack to have um, there are a few different options uh, I have so many I love snacking throughout the day between meals I love fruit and nut bars so I'll either make one from my book eat smart I have granola bars or raw nuts and fruit bars in there and um, that are really easy to just whiz up and then you end up with like 10 of them and you can just store them in an airtight container and you're kind of sorted for the next few days or if I don't have time to make anything from scratch I love just carrying snacks from Sourcebox. So you guys know about Sourcebox, you get loads of different snacks in there every month. And I always, always, always have a snack in my bag. Wherever I'm going, like you never know where you're gonna be and you're gonna be starving. And especially if I've done a workout that morning, I know I'm gonna need food. Like obviously I'll be having breakfast, lunch and dinner, but I just love to snack in between a little bit. So yeah, in Sourcebooks you never know what you're going to get every month, so it's always a surprise and yeah, it's nice to just carry them around with you so you don't get hungry. Also, I find packing your bag with a couple of snacks beforehand so you're prepared kind of stops you from being tempted from the unhealthy snacks because out and about you are just surrounded by unhealthy chocolate, crisps, even granola bars are pumped full of sugar. So if you've already got something in your bag and you're hungry, you know that it's gonna be healthy, it's good for you, and it's gonna keep you full and you won't go for those really sugary, unhealthy snacks. And Lee has asked, how many days a week should I work out? It's totally different for every single person. Some people may find that once or twice a week is more than enough for them. Some people feel like they need to go every single day. Um, for me, I like to go anything between like four to six times a week but a couple of those will be totally chill workouts like yoga or pilates which is great um i would say listen to your body see how you feel if you're working out three days a week and you feel exhausted maybe cut it down one day a week and try two days a week and see how you feel if you feel like three days a week just is not enough and you just want to go to the gym or go on a run or do something then feel free like just totally listen to your body and you'll probably find that every week is different as well. Some days I'll just, I'll feel like, do you know what, my body needs a rest. I'm only gonna work out like once or twice a week and that, that's gonna be like a super chilled workout. Other weeks I'm like, yes, I wanna go every single day. <laughs> but you just need to listen to your body. I would also say, don't get stuck into a routine where every single workout is the same. Make sure every day is different. So whether that's going to the gym and doing some kind of routine, focusing on your arms, and then the next day would be legs and then your next workout could be a run or your next workout could be like just focusing on strength rather than cardio and most importantly allow your body to rest and recover because you could do the most intense workout one day and then it will just be totally ruined by you just battering your body the next day as well if you allow your muscles to relax the next day they'll recover and recoup and you'll definitely get more of the benefits I love this question from Emily. What's the best way to get a toned bum and thighs, please? <laughs> okay, some of these like bum and thigh exercises are my favorites because you really feel like you're doing something because they burn. So my favorite exercise is called the bridge. You've probably heard of it or seen it in the gym. It's where you're lying on your back on a mat with your knees bent and you're going to lift your hips up so that you're in a bridge position, but really keep your thighs and your glutes activated as much as possible. So squeeze your glutes and then you're going to lower yourself back down and then raise back up and you're going to repeat this 12 times and keep your core really tight as well. And then after the 12th time, you're going to keep your hips up, keep your core and your glutes tight still and you're going to pulse for 10. It's going to burn so bad, but gonna feel so good afterwards. And then when you've done that, you're going to repeat this, but doing a single leg bridge. So you've guessed it, you stretch out one of your legs up off of the ground, keeping one of the legs bent still, and you're going to do that exact routine again, and then repeat on the other leg. And you're gonna do this whole exercise three times. Honestly, it does kill, but it's so, so good. I love it. Other exercises that I do in the gym for glutes and legs are deadlifts. 
So you can start off with a really low weight or even just with a bar to start with and build the weight up over time. Kettlebell swings are amazing. Uh, lunges with weights and then also squats, of course. You've got you've to get a squat in there somewhere. During the day, I always eat healthy, but in the evening I crave chocolate, cookies and sweet drinks. Do you have any tips? I think everyone has this same problem. Like, the evenings is always my weakest moment because you can, you wake up, you have a healthy breakfast, you're snacking healthily, really great lunch, even dinner can be really good. It's after dinner, isn't it? When you're just like, oh, I could really do with something sweet right now. And um, what I do is I just make sure that it's not just because I'm hungry. So I'll make sure I have a good portion for dinner. Um, but then if I still feel like something sweet, maybe I'll have a tea. Without caffeine though, because I am so sensitive to caffeine. If I have a caffeinated drink in the evening after dinner, even like after 5 p.m., I will be up all night. So um, yeah, a caffeine free tea. This one's actually caffeine free. This is from Reserva Life. Hidden hibiscus, it's really nice. Um, so just like, yeah, a nice tea. If not, go and have like a sweet treat or something. I have so much dark chocolate and um, you really adjust your taste buds after having dark chocolate a while. I honestly think if I were to have milk chocolate now, it would just taste way too sweet for me. Um, so yeah, try out dark chocolate because it is a healthier version of a sweet treat. It's still, you know, it's not totally healthy. It does have sugar in there, but you can't be 100% healthy 100% of the time. So allow yourself treats. Don't feel guilty about it. It's totally normal. Dark chocolate is amazing. But if you want something even like more indulgent than just dark chocolate, try making some um, treats. Like you can make protein balls that are made from dates and they are so, so sweet. So they've got cacao in there, so they taste like chocolate truffles. They're amazing. Get baking, but use alternative ingredients to make it healthier, but it still tastes so, so indulgent. For example, I have recipes for chocolate cakes and cheesecakes and crumbles and all kinds of things, brownies, and they taste absolutely amazing. But yeah, totally guilt-free. Like you need to allow yourself a treat, but they're made from better ingredients. Right, next question. How many hours per day do you normally sleep? How did you get used to waking up earlier? Oh, you never get used to it, honestly. I mean, I don't even wake up that early. I know some people wake up at like five in the morning every day. I wake up around seven, sometimes earlier, sometimes 6.30, because I do a lot of workout classes at, that start at 7 a.m. So sometimes I'll literally like roll out of bed and go. Um, but yeah, you don't get used to it. I definitely am not a natural morning person. I try to get eight hours every single night. I absolutely love my sleep. I look forward to going to bed. I always have, ever since I was a little girl. My mum said that she used to say that she could play a brass band in my bedroom and I would not wake up because I just love my sleep so much. But I aim for eight hours. Recently, to be honest, I've been getting about seven, which is still fine, like it's still really good. Um, and yeah, wake up at around 6.30, 7 a.m. And the reason I do it is because my classes in the morning or the gym or running or whatever it is, that's just part of my routine. I don't see it as a chore. Um, it's like, you don't wanna be late for work. I don't wanna be late for the gym, for example. So yeah, it just becomes part of your routine. But even if it's not fitness related, I still wake up at 7 a.m. every single day because I obviously don't work out every day, but I still am up, um, get to work. So yeah, you just, you just kinda of have to, don't you? If I didn't wake up at seven, I'd probably just sleep in for ages. So yeah, I like I like the routine of being up early. If I sleep in too much, I feel like I've missed the day and I don't like it. As much as I would love to sleep, I then do wake up and I feel like, oh, I've just missed like an hour of what I could have been doing on emails. So yeah, I just try and get into the routine. It isn't easy, but when you're up, you feel really good. What foods do you recommend to eat for a healthy dinner? I only know salad, I need more healthy meal ideas. Yes, you do need more ideas because salad can be very, very boring and repetitive. And then if you're only having salad, you're more likely to then want the unhealthy stuff because you're just not gonna feel satisfied eating a salad, especially for dinner. So um, last night, for example, 
Joe and I made my Mexican chili bowl. So it's like a chili con carne, but without the meat. So it's a plant-based version of a chili. And it's so delicious. You've got loads of beans in there. You've got mushrooms, peppers, onions, garlic, a rich tomato sauce. We had sweet potato fries on the side that were baked. So they were more like sweet potato wedges. On some brown rice and quinoa as well. And it's just so satisfying and filling and it's really really good for you so I would say just experiment with like beans and pulses and different grains loads of veggies you can do so much with vegetables make some roasted Mediterranean vegetables for example with some balsamic vinegar and olive oil that's always really great on the side healthy food doesn't just have to be bland salad leaves it can be so exciting and you need to make sure you're getting an abundance of nutrients in there that you probably wouldn't get just from salad leaves so you need to get the protein in there you need your carbs you need all those vitamins and minerals from an abundance of vegetables invest in a recipe book or just looking on um res at recipes online and seeing what you can make tips on how to be confident at the gym there are so many people there i feel tiny and uncomfortable working out in front of everyone I think this is a problem that so many people have. The gym is such an intimidating place because, let's face it, it's normally full of men that dominate the weights area and when I first started going to the gym I felt like everyone was looking at me, I felt like I was out of place, I felt like everyone knew that I didn't know what I was doing, but in reality it's everyone is so in the zone in the gym that they're only thinking about what they're doing. I guarantee people aren't even looking at you, but I know exactly what you mean. You do feel like people are staring at you. But I would just bear in mind that people are going to the gym to do their own workouts. They're not looking at other people and worrying about other people. I also think it would help for you to know exactly what you're doing when you go to the gym. So plan ahead before you go. Say you're going in the morning, while you're having your breakfast, um, think about in your head what you want to focus on so maybe it's your legs or your arms or a full body workout and plan it on your phone in your notes and plan exactly what you're going to do so maybe three sets of lunges, squats and burpees or something even like down to your warm up like walking on the treadmill for five minutes before you do anything plan everything you're going to do and then when you're in there, all you'll be thinking about is look at following your notes. Like, okay, right, now I've got an ab workout, then I'm gonna do lunges, then I'm gonna do squats, and then before you know it, your time is up and you're ready to go home. And I just find that really helps. So I, I do that now, like every time I go to the gym, I plan what I'm gonna do beforehand. So when I'm there, I don't even look at anyone else. I don't even notice who else is in there and what they're doing. So yeah, plan ahead and don't try not to worry about it. I know it is intimidating, especially at first, if you're not familiar with the gym, um, but yeah, I guarantee people in there don't even notice. So that's it guys, they are all of my questions that I'm gonna answer. Thank you so much for sending in your questions. I'm definitely gonna keep up these Q and A's. Let me know in the comments actually what topics you want me to focus on. So this one is obviously health and fitness, but I'm more than happy to do Q and A's on anything, whether it's beauty, fashion, careers, university, just like anything, life, love, whatever it is, let me know suggestions in the comments and I'll definitely try and make that happen. But thank you so much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you very soon. Bye.